Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at the difference between crop versus sequence size. This is one that can definitely trip you up if you're expecting a certain aspect ratio, whether that's wide, tall, vertical, square, and you're viewing it in something like a web browser, YouTube, or whatever, and the results don't look what, like what you expected them to look from Premiere Pro. And I wanna show you two different ways of doing this. One is using a crop effect, the other is using a sequence size, and I'll show you the final uploaded results. So let's have a look at crop. What the heck is crop first? So here's a clip in the timeline. I'll go to my effects. Choose crop, apply the crop, and here I can make changes. So if I wanted this vertical, I could chop this right and left and have it vertical. But what you're looking at here is not the edge of the video, this is video. If we go to our little wrench and choose transparency grid, you'll see there's more stuff here. And that stuff gets exported out as a black background. It's going to be there whether you want it or not. That's just the way it, it is. Now, what I've done is I put the crop effect on this adjustment layer to give you the same example. So if I turn the adjustment layer on and off, you can see that's the original clip. That's the original clip. And that's the original clip. So if I turn this on and now I'm cropped and I go to export, the default is going to export as HD. As you'll see down at the bottom, you get a very clear indication of what our source is, 1920, 1080, and our output size is 1920 by 1080. What's that going to look like on YouTube? It's going to look like that. That's the same video in Premiere Pro. The black areas here are going to show as black. It's not going to crop. Now, you can make changes in the export dialog box, this export mode, to actually chop it and change the size. I don't advise it because it could involve resizing the media and lowering the quality, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So when you're choosing something over here, you can drop down the video size, and usually all of these are checked when, when it says match source, the size, the frame rate, but if you click in the frame size, click in to here and choose custom, you can change this, unlock this so it's, it doesn't change uh, the other side. So I can put 1080 in here, and what you'll see is not what you would expect. You're probably thinking <laughs> Premiere Pro's lost its mind. It's the scale to fit thing over here, scale to fit. So remember our video frame goes all the way to the edge. So that's why it did that. Now what you can do is click in here and choose scale to fill. And our output size here on the right is set to 1080 by 1080. So I get the same results that I want, square, but I'm not sure where the scaling happened. To me, scaling is always a scary thing. If I'm going to scale something, I wanna know how much I scaled it. How much did I scale this? Actually, I don't even wanna scale it. I just wanna have it uh, set to the right size. So I wouldn't use this example at all. I'll go back to my edit mode. And instead, in the sequence settings, and when you're making a new sequence, let me go back over to here. Need a little bit more room. Make a new sequence. It's much better to go to the settings and change it in here. So I could make a 1080 by 1080 square frame sequence. And that's what I've done with this example here. So in this example, we go to our sequence settings, 1080 by 1080. Okay, good. 
by the way, you'll notice that I had to make this one longer. Right now, YouTube, if you upload a square or vertical video that's shorter than a minute, it sticks it in shorts and there's no way to, to change that. So I had to make these longer. Thanks, YouTube. Uh, so now watch what happens when I go to export. Now I'm going to export. And one of the defaults now is that Premiere Pro keeps the last setting. So I'm going to choose high quality, high bit rate, just to show you what the default setting would be. So even on the default setting, it's, it's keeping the custom setting here. My source is 1080 and my output is 1080. And again, let's go look at that on, there it is on YouTube and you can see it plays back as a square video. No black bars, all the right size. Yay, sequence size, not crop. What about vertical? It's the same thing. Let's go back, back to edit. I've got a vertical example here. If we go to our sequence settings, 1080 by 1920, there it is. It's the same content, just positioned differently. The full frame is here. So if I select the clip and move it, the full frame is inside here. I can move this any way I want. In fact, Adobe now has a reframe option that's incredible. I put a link in the description that will automatically reframe um, a clip if you're doing something like this, if you're going from wide to, to vertical um, and it does a good job. If these were all shot with a, a smartphone in vertical, then they're just gonna drop in perfectly. But again, let's go to export. All the default settings over here and I'll make it set the frame size automatically. We're going 1080, 1920, 1080, 1920. Back to YouTube, there it is. No black bars and it outputs perfectly. So that is how you get control over what you're exporting before it even gets out of Premiere Pro. Don't use the, those export setting fill frame things because they could be scaling things incorrectly. Get used to working with the proper sequence size first and you can save those as presets and then reuse them. If you do a lot of HD or a lot of uh, vertical uh, video editing, then you can do that. In fact, there's a workspace Adobe gives you now for vertical video. So you are in control. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you have found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? You can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly like all of our wonderful donors. Thanks, great donors. There's a ton of free stuff that you can download. There's a member section, and also in the member section, there's a spreadsheet of every episode easier to search. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to poke around out there in the forums and listen to the things that people are having problems with and let them know the problems are easy to fix.